The Void Century has been a source of great mystery in the world of One Piece. As the name indicates, the Void Century is a period of 100 years spanning from 900 to 800 years ago in the world of One Piece. During this time frame, the world of One Piece was incredibly turbulent, and massive water was fought between two superpowers. Not much is known about the Void Century but during it, the ancient kingdom was known to be at its peak, and, to combat them, 20 monarchs banded together and then fought against them. It is believed that the 20 monarchs ended up winning against the ancient kingdom, and that is how the world government was eventually created. Fans know very little about this ancient kingdom, as the vast majority of the information about them is still obscured. However, the final saga of One Piece has seen a lot of new and interesting things get revealed about the ancient kingdom, such as the identity of one of the 20 monarchs, especially in the recent chapter, The 20 Monarchs. One Piece recently saw King Cobra meet up with the five elders during the reverie. This sequence is a part of Sabo's flashback, who recently arrived on the Momwaro Island. There, he met with Dragon and Ivankov and told them the truth about what happened at the reverie. One of the most important parts of the reverie was the meeting that took place between King Cobra and the five elders. When the two met, Cobra mentioned to the five elders that the world government was formed nearly 800 years ago and it was created by 20 monarchs banding together. These monarchs likely fought in the Great War and thereafter established themselves as the rulers of the entire world. They are what came to be known as the Celestial Dragons, as are their descendants. The Celestial Dragons then created the Empty Throne and marked their weapons around it as an oath to never buy for more power. This symbolized their equality and the fact that the world had no true ruler but the 20 monarchs together. When the 20 monarchs moved to the Holy Land of Mary A. Joy, there was a power vacuum created in their respective countries. To that end, new royal families were elected by these 20 monarchs and installed as the rulers of the countries. What's even more interesting is the fact that these 20 kings then went on to erase their own records from history so as to ensure a smooth transition to power for the new rulers. Nefertari Family's Queen The Celestial Dragons moved to the Holy Land of Mary Ajoa soon and started living their lives out as the gods of the world. Their descendants are observant in the world of One Piece today and have already played a significant role in the story. However, unlike the other Celestial Dragons, there was one family that belonged to the 20 monarchs that was different from the rest, and this family was the Nefertari Dynasty. Fans are very well familiar with the Nefertari Dynasty, as they have already met people from it during the Alabasta Saga. Vivi, who is an incredibly important character in the story, as well as her father, King Cobra, who fans are very well aware of at this point, belong to this dynasty as well. Their leader at the time of the formation of the world government was none other than Nefertari Lily. It was revealed in One Piece 1084 that Lily fought alongside the other 19 monarchs and played a part in the formation of the world government. However, unlike the others, she did not become a celestial dragon because she chose to go back to the surface and rule her country by herself. It appears that Queen Lily had a sense of belonging and duty when it came to her people in Alabasta and, as a result, she wanted to go back and not lead a life as a celestial dragon. For this very reason, a weapon is also missing around the empty throne. This means that there are only 19 weapons marked around this magnificent chair that sits at the center of the world. The Death of Queen Lily Queen Lily's actions were possibly seen as betrayal by the other 20 monarchs, and this is reflected in the thinking of the five elders today who consider the Nefertari family to be traitors to the Celestial Dragons. On her way back to Alabasta, where she wanted to spend the rest of her life ruling her people, tragedy befell her. For some reason, as Cobra explained, Lily's records after that point were erased from the ancient texts. This isn't because someone went on to erase them, but simply because Lily ended up dying or or vanishing somehow. Something happened to her on her way back from Mary Ajoy to Alabasta, however, what exactly it was isn't known to the fans. In her stead, her brother ended up taking the throne and, with that, the responsibilities that come with it. And Vivi, who is the current princess of the land of Alabasta, comes through his line. The five elders mentioned that they did not know what happened to Lily simply because it was so long ago in the past that they don't have any information about it. However, shortly after they mentioned 
mention this, Emu, the sovereign of the world, who actually sets adopt the empty throne despite the wow that all the founding 20 took, appeared. Emu shocked both Cobra and the five elders for different reasons. To the five elders, their mere presence in front of Cobra was shocking as Emu should not be showing themselves in front of anyone. For Cobra, it was doubly shocking as this person went ahead and climbed upon the empty throne and sat on it, shattering his belief that the world had no true ruler and, at the same time, they mentioned the name of Queen Lily, meaning that they know of Lily's fate and had something to do with the tragedy that befell her on her way back from Mary Ajoy to the land of Alabasta. Oda has gone on to reveal great details about the Void Century. While the events of the war are still under wraps and covered at the moment, what Oda has revealed here to the fans is something extraordinary, as a family from this cryptic century has now emerged. At the same time, another person who existed during this time has now been revealed to the fans. Fans do not know yet just what exactly Ima will reveal about Queen Lily. It is highly likely that more information about the Void Century will be revealed to the fans in the upcoming chapters of One Piece. What's more, it is also likely that Oda will unmask Emu for the very first time as they have always been drawn in a silhouette so far. One Piece is in its final saga, and the time is now for every major revelation to be drawn. Oda himself is incredibly excited for this great endeavor, and the fans are as well. And in other news, One Piece, Nine Invincible Devil Fruits. Devil Fruits form the core of the power system in One Piece. These are mystical fruits present in the One Piece world that grant their eaters incredible fighting prowess. As was revealed recently in the story, Devil Fruits are an extension of human imagination and only exist because of desire. As such, these devil fruits can grant various powers to the users and have no limitations applied to them. Devil fruits usually exist in three classes, and they are Paramecia, Zoan, and Logia. While all of them are special in their own way, only a few devil fruits are considered to be invincible. Madu Madu no Mi That Madu Madu no Mi is a Logia type of devil fruit that is currently used by Fleet Admiral Sakazuki. This devil fruit allows him to turn into magma, as well as create and manipulate it at will. This devil fruit has the attacking power of the highest order, and, as seen during the Marine Ford War, it can even compete against the Yonko. Its powers are incredibly destructive, and on its own, this devil fruit shines as one of the very best in the story. Goro Goro no Mi the Goro Goro no Mi is one of the few invincible devil fruits in One Piece and was introduced to the fans during the Skypiea arc. This devil fruit belongs to Enel and it allows him to turn into, as well as create and manipulate electricity at will. Enel's devil fruit is exceptionally overpowered and can both electrocute as well as burn the target. It can even jumpstart the user's heart if it stops beating. The power of this devil fruit is immense and only a handful of devil fruits can even hope to stand up against its power. Mero Mero no Mi The Mero Mero no Mi is a paramecia type of devil fruit that belongs to Boa Hancock. This devil fruit is exceptionally overpowered as it allows her to petrify anything. Most things can be petrified by her if they show any sort of attraction or lust towards her. However, even things that don't exhibit this emotion towards her can be petrified, as has been seen when she petrified pacifistas and even cannonballs. Hancock's ability is extremely dangerous and even a Yonko, such as Blackbeard, was sure that, if given the opportunity, Hancock would be able to defeat him. Ope Ope no Mi The Ope Ope no Mi is also a paramecia type of devil fruit and this power belongs to Trafalgar Law. This devil fruit allows him to create giant rooms within which he can control nearly anything. Essentially, anyone inside the rooms is like a patient on the operating table for him to do what he likes. The Oak Oak Nomi is known to be the ultimate devil fruit as it can swap personalities and even grant immortality to someone. This devil fruit is highly coveted and its powers are immense. In its awakened state, it is even more dangerous and capable of even severely injuring a Yonko. Saru Saru no Mi The Saru Saru no Mi is a paramecia type of devil fruit that belongs to the former emperor of the sea, Big Mom. This devil fruit is immense as it allows Big Mom to control all souls in existence. Big Mom can rip out the souls of her targets if they show even a bit of fear towards her. At the same time, 
She can also manipulate her own soul in any way she sees fit. She can give life to inanimate objects and create homies. She can also give life to intangible things such as light, flames, water, or clouds, and create special homies. Big Mom's Devil Fruit abilities are insanely overpowered, and she surely has one of the Devil Fruits that can be considered invincible. Gura Gura no Mi The Gura Gura no Mi is the strongest Paramecia Devil Fruit in one piece. It was formerly wielded by Edward Newgate and is currently in possession of Teach. This Devil Fruit allows the user to produce quakes out of thin air. The user can also launch powerful tsunamis with its powers. This Devil Fruit is known to have the ability to destroy the entire world, and that in itself is enough of an explanation as to why it is considered invincible. Yo Yo No Me Model, Sire You The Yo Yo No Me Model, Sire You is an exceptionally overpowered mythical zone Devil Fruit that belongs to the former Yonko. Kaido. This devil fruit allows him to transform into a giant blue eastern dragon capable of manipulating the weather. It also grants Kaido incredible toughness, as his exterior can only be penetrated properly with attacks coded in the Supreme King Hockey. Other than that, the firepower that this devil fruit offers is immense as Kaido can easily destroy islands and more. Even Luffy's Nika abilities struggled against Kaido to quite an extent. Yami Yami no Mi Among the Logia devil fruit, the Yami Yami no Mi is known to be the strongest of all. This devil fruit allows Blackbeard to manipulate darkness and suck in everything, even light itself. Its biggest ability is that it stops other devil fruit users from using their powers as long as he is in contact with them. This devil fruit is known to be the most sinister of all fruits, and it is extremely overpowered, as has been seen on several occasions already. Hito Hito no Mi model, Nika, the Hito Hito no Mi model, Nika is is a mythical zone type of devil fruit that was eaten by Luffy. This devil fruit is incredibly powerful as it grants Luffy a rubbery body but, on top of that, allows him to fight with immense freedom. It turns him into the warrior of liberation and makes him capable of spreading joy and laughter wherever he goes. The true power of the devil fruit lies in its awakened state and once that happens, the user becomes even stronger and is able to fight with even more freedom. There is nothing that the user of this devil fruit cannot do and their powers are only limited by their imagination. Even things that are deemed impossible, such as running in the air or creating things seemingly out of nothing become possible, as long as the user can imagine them. It is known to be the most ridiculous power to ever exist, and rightly so. That's a wrap for this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with more amazing videos very soon.